talk a little bit about who is Massive Capital. We're going to talk about partnering opportunities with Massive Capital. Um, the, it's, it is a cash study because you're going to keep the cash, but it's really a case study um, and uh, about how much cash you're going to keep. That's probably Mike's uh, Freudianism <laughs> there uh, as he was updating the slides while we were waiting to get in. And then always plenty of time for Q&A. And then after the Q&A, we hang out for a little bit and get to know each other a little better. <laughs> Well, it's sort of a cash study. Uh, it is, I think. So it's that a was. Good one. <laughs> I think it's kind of a mix of of things there. So. It is. Awesome. So we are super excited that. Oh, we got the wrong date on this one, though, Mike. Why? Oh, uh, the yes, I'll, I'll update that. Thank you, Trevor. Uh, <laughs> the next one. The so, QR code is correct. The QR the code, QR code correct. is correct. So Massive Capital is doing its first in-person meetup in Dallas, and it's going to be on February 15th, Oops. 16th, and 17th. Sorry, oh, we just lost the slide, but you can go ahead and scan that QR code, but we will also put it in the chat, the link, um, so that you can get some information about that event uh, that's coming up. We just finished our virtual event that uh, we had about three or 400 people come to that event. It was a great day. So hopefully some of you were on this call and you were able to do it. Our oh, Mike's already put it in the chat, but this is our first in-person and we are super, super excited to be able to do this. Yeah, and uh, check out that QR code and uh, take a look. Uh, let me try here again, Trevor. So do you see now my, the- Yes, we do. Uh, so this is where it should bring you to the MECON uh, registration and get your tickets. And you can see a little bit about what the event is and when it is here. Um, the types, so we got uh, early, bird, early bird VIPs. And then really a cool thing is a inner circle access, um, which is gonna be uh, a little more intense, a little more one-on-one -on -one type of uh, situation, small, uh, groups that we're going to have for the inner circle. So, um, yeah, you come there and then just go get your tickets and then you sign up. So take a test, see if it's working and, uh, go ahead and get signed up in there. Awesome. Super excited right. about this event. All right. You ready for the next slide? Trevor? Yes, sir. Whoops. It went too. sorry. All right, so a little bit about uh, Massive Capital. So Massive Capital is a vertically integrated real estate company. We specialize in ground up construction, retail, flex space, industrial, mixed use, and multifamily. We are also an owner operator for value add multifamily assets. So we do equity brokerage. So brokerage is on triple net lease uh, retail locations. We do property management, again, on the retail triple net type locations. Uh, we're not yet doing our own property management on the multifamily side. Uh, development, construction. So when you say construction metal and construction wood, those are two different types of construction. One is very much suited to retail, mixed use facilities, uh, industrial warehouses, and then wood is more, let's say, housing, multifamily, some of the different things. And then we're very excited about our education program and we'll put a link in there where you can find out some more information about what we're doing with our education program and several of our students are always joining these calls. So you'll see on the map all the places where we have assets or we're looking seriously for assets. So Realty One is the company that we're partnering with and they have about 71,000 square feet retail center. They have 252,000 square feet um, and I think that was actually supposed to be Lifestyle Center. So a total of about 500,000 square feet, about 290 million in annum. And then Massive Capital itself, we have 36,000 square feet of multifamily. X-Space, which is an exciting project, is about 90,000 square feet. And we have 1,346 multifamily units for a total of 175 million. Most exciting is when you add those two together 
And I know I say this every week, but I never thought I'd say half a billion dollars. Um, so I'm super excited to be able to say that. Um, it's a big milestone for a company that's been around for a short period of time. Thank you, Trevor. One second. Um, so while you're, uh, what I was, one thing I was, I was actually looking to see if, uh, no, it's good. I was double checking. We were recording the, uh, okay. on the construction, one thing on metal, some people think maybe still, that's more like steel frame. And then a lot of people think the wood construction people will hear stick built. So those are just a couple other terms or terminologies that you might think about around that construction style. All right, and so this is the extended team of Massive Capital. Um, so you'll see a lot of the people at the very top row are the ones that you'll be dealing with on a regular basis, myself, Jasmine, Maria, Candice, um, and all of the folks in there. But behind us now with partnering with Massive Capital, you can see we've got a very large finance team, we've got brokerage, we've got construction. So all of these folks now are part of the greater Massive Capital team. And it's a team that keeps growing over and over. Every time I turn around, there's some, somebody new, uh, but it's super, super exciting. And I think we skipped over the principal slide or is that next? There we go. I knew we didn't lose you guys. So, so as we've expanded, we've sort of doubled the size of our executive team. So most of you will know Sharar, Sanjay, and Mike, who are the principals of Massive Capital. And then with the merger, Bo, Alexis, and Pat are also part of the executive team. And everyone on the team has various roles um, and responsibilities for helping to grow our company. And it's, again, it's just super excited to have this many sharp minds all pointed at one direction, which is, uh, you know, either buying or building quality assets for investors to invest in. So super exciting. Thank you. Yes. And these are our current activities for the year. So if you can see down at the bottom, so we closed on a new land development deal here in Austin, 10 acres. Uh, we did Amberwood Apartments in Dallas, Texas, Warner Robins, which was 176, I think, or 96 units in Georgia. Uh, we raised money for the x Space new development in Houston, Texas. And then we um, are doing the new retail space in Conroe. That's just outside of Houston, another one in Katy. Um, we're working on a value add, which is a 506B. Um, in the San Antonio market. So if you know someone in the Massive Capital Group, reach out to us. And then we're working on a triple net lease in Austin in the retail. And we're just finishing up North Carolina. So our North Carolina deal only has a couple of spots left. The really good thing about this one is it is the we partnered with a local team, Bobby and John, and those guys are amazing. This is the second asset um, their first asset, they've actually completely hit their business plan. Uh, we made some distributions to our current investors. And this one is located very close to that asset. So it's 41 units. Um, and as I say, we only have a couple of spots left. So you can scan the QR code or reach out to any of us in the investor relations team. Um, that, that particular project is going to be closing in, in the next 10 days. Excellent. Excellent. Thanks, Trevor. And I think, again, the QR code there, you can test that, try that out. It lets you get to the uh, Massive Capital uh, Investor Portal. And you can, once in there, there's no commitment to sign up. Uh, but once you're in there, you can take a look at different investments that are available now and in the future and uh, an opportunity to look at our deals. So uh, please uh, take a chance there, take a look use the QR code, get signed into the portal, and uh, just be part of the journey. Uh, again, no risk to sign up, no commitments to sign up. Uh, so, Yeah, and one, one, one other point too is you, Sorry, will see our, you will see our 506C deals because they're public, and only people that we've marked as having an established relationship with us 
see any 506B offerings. So it's super, super um, good for us to be able to get to know you so you can see all of the deals that are happening. Um, so on a 506B, you do not have to be accredited to do invest, but you have to um, be able to get. So, so there was a question, this is an asset in Raleigh, North Carolina market, 42 doors. We're just finalizing the race. Good to see you, Esther. It's been a long time. Thanks for the question. Okay. Yeah, awesome. Thanks. And I'm going to turn it over to my friend, Mike, who's going to take us for a while and then, and then Shrar will start. Awesome. Thanks, Trevor. Thank you. And I want to share, this is the, uh, our Harris Ridge opportunity, which is our first, um, partnership, uh, as we came together with Realty One, uh, partners. And as we continue our process of the merger with them, the, this is an opportunity where this is a, uh, a development project to retail center and the it's a three-year return so it's a quicker return and it's a 1.72 multiple in that three-year period so you know a lot of times people you're looking at the other deals are you know five to six years which are some of our multifamily deals which have usually a, a 2x on them like you know you've seen before so this is a shorter time frame and a higher a higher return uh, as if you were to extrapolate that out over a longer time. So the current opportunity as well is for those that want to have a little extra bonus on their investments. So a high velocity return opportunity uh, for people that can want to invest, you know, over two hundred fifty thousand with us, and you will continue to get the projected LP returns as here. 22% IRR, 24% um, annualized and the 1.72 multiple, uh, as well as the opportunity on a $500,000 investment, that extra 10% would come out to a potential of an additional 50,000 on that investment. So that comes in on top of the current investment, uh, the LP return here. Uh, also, it gives the opportunity to work a little closer with us and depending on the discussions and how we go, being part of the GP team is an opportunity as well. So I want to put that out there for everyone. Again, the QR code is here. Uh, feel free to you know get in, look at the deal. A little more depth details is there. The, the PPMs, the, o operating, uh, the offering memorandum is there as well. So more details is, is available in the portal. And reach out to myself or Trevor if you're interested more in this deal and this opportunity and want to talk about you know what that looks like in more detail. And this one's 20 minutes from my house, so I know the area well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Trevor, he's visits it uh, regularly. And it's something we didn't talk about here as well, and we'll get to that, was in that area in Austin, there are only currently two um, permits that have been uh, uh, approved so far for retail area centers in those areas. So this is going to be, you know, one of two new retail centers going up in that greater uh, or in that Austin area. So it's it's a very unique opportunity and getting approvals that quick in Austin. Uh, for this and, and being ready to go was was very, uh, uh, I guess, you know, I almost say special, you know, it was like they, they were able to accelerate through that review, that re approval process to, to be able to get ready and have all the permitting approved. So a few ways uh, to, to partner with Massive Capital is you know, we partner with landowners and that relates to our new construction process where we would like to do joint ventures with landowners that would like to take whatever they have of land and turn that into a larger appreciation of, of a retail space, a multifamily space, 
uh, flex storage, whatever that is that makes sense for that uh, property, the location and, and what we can do together with it. So if you have some land or you know somebody that's got some land and they want to partner, they want a JV, we come together, we do the deal together, we do the construction, the operations, uh, we'll do the debt and, and uh, everything else. And the partner then that has the land is coming in as a JV partner into that. On the multifamily side, we also are, uh, you know, we, we do, as we talked in the beginning, we have the stick built uh, construction part of the company, which basically ties into the CapEx side of multifamily. So we have our own GCs and in-house construction company to manage and do the heavy CapEx opportunities. Uh, asset management as well. We So we are aligned and we have a process system for the asset management. And if you have a deal that you're like, I want to do this deal, uh, I need some help. Then we go through the deal, review it. We talk about it. We see where we want to stand in it and how we support. And then we call that operated by others where we let the others operate and then they get to take on some of our systems and processes. The credit improvement as well, that ties into what I... On the deal, the KP, uh, bringing the experience that may be required by the lender. So being a KP is not just uh, being the that you have a balance sheet, but it's also that you are have done deals and that they see your experience as well. And then the main finally is our education program. So we have a CRM. You can go to the uh, MMS.capital if you're looking for need a CRM. Anybody that is thinking about doing capital raising at all, you need a CRM. Take a look at our opportunity here. And it's a it's got a lot of templates already coming towards you, uh, pre-built uh, around some of the uh, landing pages, website, as it relates to going and building out your own CRM, your capital raising project. It can be used for other aspects as well. And uh, let us know if you're interested in that. We also have a capital raiser certification program that we partner with Family Office Club. And with Family Office Club, they have the online training. So we do the coaching and then you we leverage the online training with Family Office Club. So you get a very unique opportunity there of the coaching and the the you know one to many opportunity in the group sessions of the coaching. And then we leverage the family office online uh, certification program that they have. Finally, our accelerator, our pathway to GP, you go to massive.capitalcoaching and you can take a look at the other programs there. And we will lead you to be a partner and go through the path that we went, uh, share that process. And you sit in weekly, daily uh, coaching calls, as well as our actual operations calls, contract to close calls, deal reviews, and everything else we do with other partners that come along. All right, going to take a pause here for a second and get ready for the education series. Thank you guys for coming again. And uh, so think about this, close out your 23 and start planning for 24. Also look at one of the things we're gonna talk a little more is again, some depreciation and how you may think or look at that and the opportunities that may be out there. Again, we are not the professionals. We are just sharing our experience and uh, knowledge based on what we've done so far. So starting out, uh, the every every time you you know real estate always has some level of depreciation, and there's the standard depreciation, more or less the straight line you you get, you know over your you know. 27 years, it's a little bit more at the front. And then you, you know, it basically is, you know, an average uh, out over the last 27 and a half years. 
of how much depreciation you get. So these are just examples of what happens from, you know, going from that straight line depreciation into accelerated depreciation. So there's a couple of things that happen you can do when we'll talk a little more about it here. You can do cost segregation, which is meaning a company comes in, does an engineering study. They look at the asset and they determine how much of that asset is in different buckets uh, based on the depreciation codes of the, IR, uh, of the IRS. So everything we do is based off of the IRS standards and the code. And the code is there to help us get a benefit if we are entrepreneurs or if we're doing businesses or if we're investing in certain types of assets. So the code is there to help us if we want to use it. And with that, the code, you know, currently allows this year is an 80% of the amount that's depreciable can be brought forward for accelerated depreciation this year. And uh, that goes to 60% next year. And I believe Schreier is going to talk a lot more on that uh, when we get to a couple slides down the road. But a combination of doing the cost segregation, which squeezes more of your costs together into certain years, and then also taking that and accelerating that depreciation or that bonus depreciation you bring forward. So instead of this, you know, starting at, you know, getting a hundred over, you know, this here period and just running it out for many years, you can actually in the first few years depreciate more like 250,000 upfront and then a little bit more in years two, three, for example, and then it kind of flattens out and then it flattens out some more. So the opportunity is that you can depreciate a lot more upfront uh, is the key uh, concept of the accelerated depreciation and also the cost segregation working together. All right, Shreyer, I'm going to take a pause for me and turn it over to you for a bit. Mike, thank you. Um... So before we get into it, this is for educational and, purposes only. I'm not a CPA, attorney, CIF, and a, a financial professional. So please consult your advisors as you kind of go through. And our role here is that we want to grow together. So wherever possible, we share our learnings and introduce concepts uh, for every, every one of us to kind of think about it and plan for it, right? So going back to um, the whole series that we're going to do that we are planning for 2024, or we're going to wrap up the 2023 and by introducing all those ideas and thoughts, then we'll finish the uh, seminar and our case study today with some of those learnings that we had from our last week's uh, conference as well, right? But here, the whole idea about the depreciation is there are two things we could do from the financial modeling perspective. It ideally is that my income, my taxable income that we're trying to lower that. We could do two ways by increasing the cost or deferring the payment so that our tax bracket goes down and then total taxable income multiplied by tax bracket is your tax payment. So here we look at the tax bracket, right? So on the top right, uh, that's one thing that I want to share with everybody else is that timing matters and also action matters depending on the time that you're gonna take. Uh, 2022, uh, we had 100% depreciation. That means if we have calculated a accelerated loss of $100,000, we're able to take it. In this year, went down to 80%. Next year, it's gonna go down to 20, uh, 60%. That means as we go in time, that amount that we can realize to defer the taxes or reduce the taxable income, that is going down over time. So that's that. That's the top right picture, right? So in other way, all things equal, if I invest something in January, versus if I invest something in this December, by design, I get 20% uh, no, lower depreciation, right? So that's the difference. Bottom right, just a reminder of, you know, sometime, or most, uh, not sometime, but most of time, you know, getting married helps. Uh, right here, if you are married, filing jointly, uh, that's your tax bracket. So ideas, if, if you take a look at it, you know, 32% versus 25% versus 22%, right? It's quite a bit of things. Sometimes if somebody's taxable earning is, 250, there are 24 percent, and then go down to you know 190 or 150. Or if you have an earning that you're hitting the 190 zone, and with the synthetic loss, you go down to that 90,000, 
or 89,000, all of a sudden the spread between the 12% and 10%, that's quite a bit. I was going to give us a $10,000 free check, right? Uh, but in this particular case, government said, hey, you know what? I give you a break, borrow the money for free. That's the interesting part about the uh, depreciation. Now, on your left-hand side, I kind of put some definition around it. It's that it's accounting strategy that you know we follow. Uh, it's an open book. Everybody knows about it. We execute on it. And that is not available for all the asset types. In a smaller single family, may not be cost effective. New builds may not be cost effective. As typically, if you hit, if you buy something around the two million dollars, and then multifamily, it matters. It, it helps. In other way, assets a little bit more expensive. With that, that has a lot of kitchen. Uh, that helps. So that's the asset type, and you know, then idea the number two is that reduces the amount of taxable income. That's that. Couple of things. Uh, typically, when we talk about depreciations, we talk about half of the story. Uh, but for us, we're going to talk about the full story. The full story are in the notes. Uh, there is a difference between available depreciation that I can take versus uh, using it this year. If you're a W-2, there's some rules associated with it. We'll talk about it next uh, next uh, seminar, sorry, next case study. And we had about four sessions around it about two months ago. If I have a W-2, then I'm not a real estate professional. If I'm not a real estate professional, unlimited tax write-off is not available. So even though I may have a $50,000 loss, I cannot take it, right? But then what happens if I'm a W-2? That's your note too. The depreciation, oh, sorry, there's a typo. Depreciation can be saved uh, to be used for a later time. That means if I invested something, I have a loss for 50,000. Then next year I sold something with a profit for 50,000. Then even though I didn't use it this year, I can use it next year. So a 50 profit, 50 loss, I have a net a zero taxable income so I can play with it. So a lot of us who come from W2, we bank uh, those depreciation as as much as we can. So because you know we know investment, it's a multiples, right? We invest continuously and we are saving those uh, depreciation or saving those losses. So in future time, when we get into a profit, then we don't have to pay the tax at that year. We can defer it on the way. Uh, Clay, it's a defer, defer, defer. Then we go to go back to where we come from. So there's no end time. You can just pass on, pass on till as long as we're here, it carries on. All right, uh, Mike, you want to go to the next slide? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Sorry, I was. That's fine. I was engaging, sorry. Okay, so the depreciation, we went down to one layer down. So one is, you know, what can we do by reduce uh, to reduce the tax bracket, which is depreciation. That means I'm investing anyways, I'm buying stocks, but I'm, instead of buying stocks of an equity company or a shell, I also buy stocks of an apartment, thus I get the depreciation. And the way depreciation happens is something called cost segregation uh, study, right? Uh, so. On the right, there's some calculation, not going to get into it, but usually, you know, if you look at the chart uh, on the left-hand side, it's 80, 20, and 80% building and 20% land as before. And after you cost seg it, you can really do it. Whole idea is that it's a straight line, you know, if you don't do cost segregation studies, it's a straight line over the course of 27 and a half years, but there's some components that has a shorter shelf life. So we said, hey, instead of 27 years, can I accelerate that and realize everything in five years and give me a huge bonus in year one? So that's that. So again, cost segregation is IRS approved process. That's the first point. And the second point is that they are performed by accounting, accountants and engineers. Uh, we work with medicine spec. Um, we have a pre-negotiated price. They do a pretty good job. So before we close the property, we do the study. So we know uh, very close to what we're going to get. Like an example, uh, for the creek side that we have in Carolina, as Mike spoke about, we get over the course of five, six years, we get about 80% depreciation, but year one, we get about 45%. That means every dollar in, I get a synthetic loss of 45 cents in this particular year that we have, so we can adjust it. Uh, so again, um, the tax savings will vary depending on your setup, depending on who you are, whether you have a W-2 business, you have other income, you exit it from a profit, it all will matter. Uh, so the point is that we need to look ahead and do the calculation and then take an action so that we don't go back to 2024 and pay an uncle send the money where we could have paid the money three years from now, four years from now, five years from now. So the point is, everybody said that we are not paying taxes. That's not a right statement. The point is we all pay taxes. 
You want to pay all the taxes, right? But not today. We're going to pay it at some other time with the time value of money. That's where we're going to do it, right? Uh, so I will not go into a little bit more. I mean, I'll stop here, but if you guys have a, a specific questions, we'll, you know, cover them during the Q&A. But we talked did, about the cost segs. Go ahead, Mike. No, go ahead. And then did you want me to jump out of this presentation at a point? I know you had some other uh, slides yes, you wanted to share. Let's go through uh, this slide up until 16. Then we'll switch, switch it back to the other one if that's okay. Okay. Uh, um you want to okay. yeah i'll get you a question in a little bit that's a long question but thank you just hold on to the question for a second so and i'll give I, you an example go ahead mike no and i was just going to share with everyone usually we have uh our, our oh, resident okay. specialist uh, uh cpa tax specialist with us bill pilkington he couldn't make it this evening so uh, just sharing that as well because then we know that we can we can let bill give the real the uh official answers while we give the unofficial answers on that note um bill and us we are strategic partners uh if anybody wants to get a hold of uh, bill drop us a note and we'll make an introduction and then you'll get 30 minutes of free session with bill he'll talk you through and give a preset analysis on that note uh our special request don't go for the cheapness of there are two kinds of cpas one they will do the taxes and that's it the other one, they will work to save your taxes, and then they will do the taxes underneath it, right? They're not that expensive if you find a good one. And the good ones are in the thick of everything. That's what they do all day long. So Bill is one of those partners. And side note, Bill does all of our books. So he knows everything about everything about Massive Capital and the team and in the principles. So you can always ask the questions. He might not answer, but uh, Bill is with us quite a bit. Uh, he helps with us. He helps us. He manages our assets as well. He does a rock tail one as well. And we we like it. All right. So let's go to the next slide. We'll give you some example of what does it look like. Uh, if you look at the far right, I would say. Uh, the, so there, this is an example. Uh, this is an example of what we receive once we send a request out. So, example, I mean, the process is we we get a property under contract, uh, the PSA gets executed. Uh, we are building the strategy for that uh, property. As a part of that, we'll send the email to one of our partners. Say, hey, would you please do a cost study, a cost sex study? And based on the cost sex study, they'll reply back saying that, hey, how much of a segregation we'll get. So, and they all they're also uh, they also send out a report by saying that without the cost seg and with the cost seg. And here is just an example of it. Uh, again, uh, here, if we look at the first line in the middle of it, it it's, it's uh, the without the cost seg, it's on the far right, right? In this particular case, if we would have done the cost seg, which we're doing year one, we get about $75,000 of loss in year 22, year 23, you got 127. The first total lines. And if you don't do cost seg, then that 75 becomes 43, the 127 becomes 54. So there's about you know almost hundred thousand dollars of tax that we're deferring at a you know, different time, which is when we're gonna sell the property three, four, five years from now. And just because we have done the cost segregation, we're able to save taxes on that. Let's imagine you are an individual earning more than 25%, 30% bracket and on bracket, and you have a synthetic loss of 100 grand. Assuming you can realize that all of a sudden there's a 30 grand worth of money that we're gonna borrow from the government at zero cost, right? So that's the beauty of the, the cost sec here. Um, then if you go to slide number two, yep. thank you. The, the next slide, this is another example. Uh, and again, uh, it shows you that how the bonus depreciation helps, right? Yeah, and this was this was older. I mean, this was from oh, a yeah. a twenty two asset, but it it's just the concept of how that works. So you take, you know, the the amount here, which was what you gained from cost segregation, and and then when you had again, this was at a hundred percent opportunity that you you had a much larger value. So you have cost seg plus bonus depreciation. Uh, to bring you, uh, you know, to bring that depreciation all forward in time for you. That was the main reason to to show these two examples, and and this is part of the reports that we get as we're doing deals from the companies we work with that do the cost segregation uh, 
process and estimates for us. Okay. Thank you, Mike. Uh, so again, these are the ideas. So the idea is that, hey, uh, I'm in month number 11. I have less than 60 days minus the Thanksgiving and, and Christmas. And I understand cost segregations. I understand the investment. What do I do with it? Right. Again, uh, there's a case study to introduce the ideas, and this is the next step, right? It's the what do I do with it? So our recommendation is, and most of you guys that I know that I talk to you guys, you guys already have it. If you don't have a personal income statement, think about you as a business. Your social security is your EIN and your earning, right? So the first thing is have a forecast. Um, you should be able to say how much I made this year, what's my you know, earnings for next, you know, 60 days or so. And if you go to Excel. And if you open up new and type in an income statement, there are about four different templates that you can find. I like the profit and loss statement. It's pretty two tabs, very simple. Do it, please do it. So uh, that's, that's I kind of took a screenshot to share that. Those are tools are available. Uh, this get income statement on the left-hand side, this is the typical mechanics. Again, I'm not a financial advisor, I'm just sharing. Uh, it's first, you calculate the revenue from your business or W2. Alongside that, you calculate the other income, which is the investment income, uh, so that it can calculate your tax bracket, right? Uh, between two and four, there's some expense line items, so calculate that in. The revenue minus the expenses should be your taxable income, right? And in between that, you will know what your tax bracket will look like. There is a chart that we shared about three slides ago, and you can always do it, or you can Google it. Uh, so whole idea is that as you calculate, you need to understand your total income into two buckets total income from W2 or your business and total income from other investments, right? Based on that, you'll calculate the you know, taxable amount, right? And then you balance between the tax bracket and tax payable from other income and you calculate how much investment you need to do in terms of it and a depreciable assets. It gets a little bit tricky on the number five. Maybe we can do a, you know, a case study how to go about it. I think we also have done one time. Uh, so the whole idea is that first, you know, you calculate how much is your net income. I'll throw some numbers in a very simplistic manner. It's let's see our, you know, it's uh, total taxable income will be hundred thousand dollars. Seventy thousand dollars came from, you know, my W two and thirty thousand because I sold some stocks or or I sold my house. On the thirty thousand. I pay tax on a thirty five percent, so ten grand of the taxable that needed. Then I have to think about okay, can I invest that 30 grand of profit into a real estate, like an apartment, so I get you know, $15,000 of loss, then you're in a better spot, right? So, and then uh, if you decide, let's you go to the calculation one through five, it sounds a lot, but it's not a whole lot. It's gonna take you two or two, three hours, then we'll be done with it. Then on a number six, uh, whenever you decide to do it, time is not on your side. So make sure that you commit to a project that has a high certainty to close by the year end. Uh, thing happens on a project. So you make sure that you're very clean about, I mean, understand which way you go. And then you kind of go from there. All right, so number six is a very important uh, example. We'll give you talking from us, right? We have three projects that we're uh, looking to close before the year end up until last Friday. And then here comes a bank, bank goes, uh, JP Morgan goes, by the time you get the loan, it will be January. Or we go from three to a two, but then the other two that we have, we are closing in next two weeks, right? So two weeks, the slippage does not a whole lot. The third project that slipped, that was supposed to be closing on third week of December, it slipped by two weeks. We're on the other side of January. So as you decide to commit on a project, make sure you ask the general partner questions. When is the closing date? A project that has a closing date middle to third week of December, and just ask, questions to make sure the loans are in place, equity are in place, they're feeling comfortable with the pays and they do it. If not, cut it down on the time and invest in projects or commit to projects that is extremely high starting to close by year end. If not, they're closing in the next three to four weeks, right? So biggest takeaway, I would say, do your income statement, sit down with your tax strategy, take down with your CPA, have that 30 minutes question. If they don't have that 30 minutes obsession, if they don't, Find another one, but have at it. And once you have it, uh, then and then you know they should be able to get you the one through five. Again, we we work hard to uh, to earn, and it's our role also spend that twenty hours, spend the fifteen hours mm -hmm. a year to make sure that we save uh, as much of a tax as we can this year, so we can pay it 
sometime down the way. I stopped sharing. I think yeah, that was a good. I went with the wrong poll. I think, but we'll. Go. <laughs> I meant to go with a poll on uh, the tax. Who's done it? so in the chat? Just I put a question there. Who's already met with their tax advisor, CPA, tax planner, whoever that is, both on closing out your twenty three now, as well as uh, initial discussions of where to start placing yourself for twenty four. Just like to get an idea who's you know, who's doing that. I mean, I've uh, I've had my meeting with Bill and uh, still meeting with Bill. So. <laughs> we had two sessions uh, more coming. Yeah. Yes. So okay. Um, Mike, uh, there was a question about Priya about the if the principal is lost, how that will help. So. It's going to depend on, so once we get the depreciation the year off, there's a depreciation capture a year later. If someone spends $100 and that doesn't come back, but it will, you captured $50, then there's still a $50 loss, right? Or if someone invested $100 and there was a loss of $200 in 2021, 2022, then you can have a gain of that. Um, but either way, you should go back and sit down with your CPA and run that model, uh, run that scenario the capital events to make sure that you're in a good spot. You don't want to get caught uh, with that scenario. Same thing, if someone has a loan, um, that's going to be segue to the other one. If if, if, if some of the investments and they are doing a, a loan modification, we're resetting the base. That means someone bought, you bought an asset for 10 million and the new loan uh, resized the property at a different price, then the Delta is a gain. So from the bank perspective, it's a gain because they wrote off $2 million with the new price, right? million dollars, and all the LPs will get a gain that becomes a taxable event. So either way, if you, I mean, if you're active, you have invested in three, four, five years, last two, three, four years, and you know your loan is coming due or and or modification happening, and or your you know, loan is coming due or and or modification, sit down with your CPA, plan for it, um, and then you can offset that, you know, um, the synthetic earning as you go. But either way, plan for it and be active about it. And I'll talk about why it's important to be active about it. Uh, that's that. And uh, the Isabel asked a question, how do you calculate the K1 losses in this case? Uh, let me qualify. K1 losses depending on existing project versus new project. And the new project, the general partner will uh, typically will do a forecast and you can, you can have Excel file and kind of plug that in. For the existing assets, look at your PPM or OM. At, I would say in this case, PPM, they should have that forecasted amount. And you know, given the year you are in, you can plug the number in. Okay. Trevor, thank you. I appreciate that. And I was, I, I, I just, I just got caught on that one. Yes, thank you. Uh, yeah, just so we don't flood Bill, reach out to me. No, I have a conversation, uh, and then I'm happy to share. Yeah, and I. Uh... Bill has a, a his uh, it's uh, he he has a way he prefers everyone to get connected. So I was uh, getting that as well. But thank you, Trevor. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, I mean Edwin, hundred percent. My biggest worry: if you're active in the investment, please avoid those fifteen hundred dollars. One or two, I know, two men show doing your CPA the day off, and then you need to know those CPAs are hanging out with the investment com investor community real estate investor community that are not so much of a single family and they understand it, they've been doing it, they're hanging out with the other syndicators and general partners, them. On that note, you know, just like YouTube University, you hear a lot of folks are coming out doing a lot of marketing, but they don't have to be that expensive. Find the one that strike a balance with you and then you spend the time with them. <laughs> that is so true. Uh, UDFI and UBIT, once you get into the an IRA mechanics and you know the leverage and the IRA put together is that. Also, some of the um, CPS will not understand IRA, Roth IRA, solo 401k, delta between a solo 401k and a Roth IRA and how they go. And we, we got into some of this in the uh, CPAs, even they do the, the large ones, but they're not real estate type, they're audit heavy. Uh, they have a hard interpretation of some of those uh, rules that you have. And again, things are sometimes based on the interpretation, right? So a very extreme hard interpretation versus a decently loose interpretation. 
uh, makes or breaks a lot of things. Uh, so it just it just it just better overall to vet your CPA just like you're gonna interview him for a job and then her and then you go go about. It. So Mike, I'll share a little bit on this side. Yeah, uh, and I think we answered most of all the questions. Even I think uh, Nick Charles had one early on, but I believe we covered it throughout the discussion process. So. So, uh, okay. The first slide is just to share that we, we closed the property in Carolina, I'm sorry, in Denver. Uh, it's it's without the depreciation. Take a look at first three years, two years, and 100, and, and a 450, 460 grand out of depreciation with the cost study. And without the cost seg, it would have been half of that. So cost seg matters. Right? This is the interesting part of it. Now, as we are talking about um, the depreciation, uh, which is this year planning. I also want to share a little bit more about the next year planning. Uh, it is becoming more important for next year planning. That's because almost, I know I know more than half of you guys here and girls, uh, we, we are active. We've been on the active in the real estate. And as the real estate, especially the multifamily is going through its phases of correction for next you know, 12 months to 18 months, uh, on one side, we'll lose some, and you know, we're gonna lose some money. But on the other side, we are also going to put our investments in a place where we are, we are on the side of the market, so we have a better upside as well. Uh, which is also why we are heavy on institutional learnings, and that means that big shops they have more forward-looking data, they have better understanding which way the market uh, market is swinging, and so if you can hang out with them, it's better. So, last uh, Friday we had our virtual conference. First half of the day, we had all the big shops uh, came and gave us the answer, JLL, Arbor, CBRE, and then Gray Steel. And then second half of the day, we talked about tax strategy and things like that. I wanted to share a little bit more about that. So I saw this slides early, early this year, but now they published it. So I thought it's an interesting way I'll show. I'll talk about three slides here as a plan for 2024. And again, on one side, we want to understand which way the market is going. And then we want to identify what the timing would look like. And then we're going to position ourselves to realize the benefits of it, right? It's like a classic strategy game a little bit more. Is it going to be exactly the way we see it? No, but a version of it should come true, right? So I will go to slide number nine. Okay. So capital markets, this was a presentation on Gavin, uh, uh, that gave us JLL. First time I saw this slide, they presented that at Rice, um, for on the Rice real estate events that I went to. And then, and when I brought in the JLO uh, broker here, we asked specifically, can I get the slide plus more? So there are three things. They, they talked about 12 things, but there are three things the biggest takeaway. Number one is really the number one. No lack of liquidity in the CRE market. But everybody's waiting for the calculation of adjustments, everything else. And now, since we're at the Q4 of 2022, uh, 2023 and going to 2024, Everybody has normalized to number three. So recession coming up, downside, upside, interest is going up. These are all done. We understand it. It's higher for longer. Higher for longer means all the way down to 2024. In 2025, we'll see some downtime. I mean, down cycle, but the down cycle will not be that much. That's going to make or break our decision today. This interest rate doesn't go up from an eight to five, steps down. So going down from an eight to seven and a half, it doesn't really make a difference. So either way, everybody's underwriting with their assumption. So the first one is no lack of liquidity and it's out there. Other one is everybody is in line of what's gonna happen of next year. And the last one is number 12, right? They're holding off. Now the question becomes why they're holding off and what they're gonna do because there's money out there, right? That goes to slide number 29. So right here, 2023, YTD October, just want to share that there are 218 funds have been created. That's the number of funds. So 218 funds have been created so far and $261 billion, that's on the sideline. $261 billion on the sideline as a dry powder held by the funds, they're waiting. They're waiting. The question is, that matches with the number. Now, what's going to happen? That's the slide. Um, go to slide number. What if? Oh, sorry. This one. 
I apologize. Okay, this one, slide number 15, I have a bunch of slides. So it shows, it's showing the maturity wave, right? Because most of the time, as you know, when we bought the assets on a pro forma up until 2022, 2021, we buy, you know, a majority of the folks who bought it, who bought it with a pro forma basis. That means I'm on a bridge debt. That means two to three years of maturity, right? If we take a look here, especially on 2024 and 2025, let's talk about 2024. They have around $175 billion of loan coming due. Okay. And that is the loans coming due means that they have to either refi or sell. What percentage of that? We'll talk about it. But this is interesting. We have $175 billion of the loan coming due in this slide. And then we have $261 billion of money on the sideline. So price correction is real. It is happening. It's going to happen, you know, now till the next year, right? And so my my ask is that get excited at the same time, even though some of the losses or some of the investments are coming up at loss, right? This is the time you be very active, understand everything, plan for it so you can get in. From the price correction perspective, last decade, there was a price going up. We have a heartbeat. We bought the property. God gave us a gift. We sold it for profit. Right now is the time. True performance is showing up. So as an investor, get excited, plan for it, and then when the time comes, you pull the trigger. Don't go other way because time is gonna go by really, really quick. Right. So that's. So I thought it was really interesting. Uh, so a similar pattern. We are going to follow a version of this education for our February event. Whole idea is that we are getting into 2024. We want to hear from the head honchos. And uh, so we are trying to uh, bring some C-level folks for some of the large organizations so you can hear from their view of the world. We tried to bring the Dallas Fed CEO, Lori, had a good conversation with her team twice, but Lori said they're not the Deshariah. We like the massive capital events and the audience, but you are a for-profit company. A federal employee at my level cannot come in and I shall buy us. But the point is, it's gonna be fun for February and for all the investors here start planning for it and I'll start planning for it. Get excited about it. I'll stop here. Mike, back to you. Uh, thank you, Shreyer. I think that was actually, that's uh, we're at seven o'clock as well. Yes. You can hear my uh, cock uh, going off, my cuckoo clock. So uh, <laughs> if there's a, let's just open for questions. I don't, we didn't have any more to present and uh, yeah, you can, Feel free to unmute yourself, raise your hand. And I shared in the chat as well. I don't know, maybe some people left, but I saw from the poll there were a number of people that were interested in the coaching and or potential other coaching program. And so I put in the chat uh, the link to sign up, book a call with me, and we can go through what we do, how it works. And you can also kind of see what some of it is from... Uh, what's on the, the landing page there for it. So take a look there.